Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of React WooCommerce Theme Development with WooCommerce REST API. So far, as you can see, we've got all of the products that are being displayed. And in this video, we are going to add the add to cart functionality. So how do we do that? Let's begin. So currently, this is the component where the products are being displayed from. And then what we can do is we can create another directory called cart. And then inside of this, we can create add to cart component. I will say const to cart. So let's add to cart and then return empty for now, export default add to cart. Now, there are a few important things to consider. The very first thing is that, notice that we have variable products as well. We not, not only just have the standard products, but we also have variable products and we need to handle the variable products differently. Okay, so, so let's check what we get in each of these product and inspect. There we go. So, Let's see. The first one is Ray-Ban glasses, which is a standard product, which is fine. So as you can see that there are certain products which have a different type, like for example, this one is variable product, which is perfume, right? And some of them are also group product. So for example, I think this one right here, this is grouped. So we're going to handle the grouped product and the variable products differently later on. And we're just going to do the simple product right now but the api that we're going to use does handle the variable products as well so we'll come back to that later let's start with the basic first so the first thing we can do is we can go ahead and extract this into a specific component so it looks a bit cleaner so if you go to products we'll create something called product create a file called product we'll say cons product equals done and let's move all of that this is my this is my product so i'm just going to take that and I'm gonna put that over here. And of course it's gonna need the product. So props, say product. And if is empty product, if it is empty product, then return null, return null. Okay. And the next thing we do is we'll take that here, product. You have to also export it. So we'll say export default product. And then over here we'll say product. And then we're going to pass the product to this. And there you go. And then we also have to pass the key. We are going to say product. In fact, let's just copy this whole thing. It's key. And let's put this image over here. Okay. And then we can remove all of this from here. We don't need that. And then we check the type of the product. So currently we have image. We'll have the type. So say product type equals product dot type otherwise empty and then currently we'll just handle the simple product and we'll come back to the variable products later so for that gonna do is below this we'll check if product type equals simple then we're going to use add to cart cart else null and then we also have remember we also have to handle the external products so probably have a button for um the external link but again we'll come back to that later so add to cart we have got export default add to cart which is great let's pull that on top so import add to cart from add to cart which is great and then let's pass the product so we are passing the product to the add to cart so i will go over here and then we're going to say product and again the same thing if product is empty then we we just want to return null. Remember, we have to also import the is empty from Lodash. There we go. So now, same thing there as well. So copy it, paste it here. That's it. And this is where we will do all of the magic, where we are going to basically do the add to cart. Okay. So in order for us to do the add to cart, uh, we're going to hit an endpoint. So I'm going to use Xeos for that, and I'm going to create a function. But before we do that, let's just add a button. Okay. This is going to return a button and this is going to call an add to cart function the job of which will be to just add that particular product into the cart. Okay. So then we are going to pass, then we're going to pass the product ID to this. So this function will accept the product ID so it can add that particular product to the cart. 
Okay, and then just add some classes for styles. So these are some of the tailwind classes I've added to make it look good. The next thing we do is inside of utils, we create some of the functions and that function would be add to cart function. Uh, in order for us to do that, let's create a directory called cart because this is going to be a big project. So it's important that we keep things organized and not mess it up by adding big chunks of codes. So we don't want our file to grow really large. So it's difficult to understand. So it's best to do the coding in modular pattern. Okay, so inside of cart, we'll create a file called index.js. And then I'm going to paste the code snippets here. And then I'll explain to you what, what they do. Okay, so first function will be add to cart function. And this is going to take the product ID. And this will also take the quantity. So if you don't pass any quantity here as a second parameter, then by default, it's going to accept that as one. Then we need to get the session. So basically what we want to do is the first time. So if you would remember from the previous video, the moment you do add to cart for the first time, which means you send a request to WordPress saying that, okay, add to cart. If the session doesn't exist, then it creates one. Let's say if it's the first time, so it creates a session and, and sends that in the response headers. Okay. So, uh, what we're going to do is we'll create a function that is going to get us that session. And, and basically what we want to do is that we want to store that session in local storage. So this function is going to ensure that uh, it gets that information from the local storage if it is available. Okay. The second function is basically to get the config for our card. So as you can see, we are making a post request. If you remember from the previous video, we were doing a post request for add to cart. And this is going to be the endpoint for that. And it's going to accept some configuration. And that's what's going to be given to it by this function. So if you notice that we are trying to break the code into chunks, uh, small pieces, so that it's reusable. Okay. So this is going to give the config. Don't worry about, you know, what goes inside of the function. We'll come back to that. But just let's go with the flow. Now, this is going to be the endpoint. So rather than making this function dirty by putting a long <laughs> length of the endpoint, remember that we spoke about creating constants so they can be reused, right? So if so, if you go to endpoints under utils slash constants slash endpoints, so this is where we have all of the endpoints. So I have added the add to cart endpoint. And in fact, I should name it as just cart endpoint. There's no need to make it as add to cart endpoint because remember that the URL for whether you want to add do add to cart or if you want to do view cart or delete the URL is anyways the same. So it's better to name it as uh, cart endpoint. Now let's change that. Okay. So cart endpoint and then we pass the product ID, the quantity. Uh, so product ID will be available to this function over here and it's going to be passed when we call this function. So let's just do add to cart and, we, and on top, I'm just going to import that. So import add to cart and then it's aut it's automatically importing that from that path. Okay. So this function passes the product ID and this product ID will be available to add to cart, which is great. Uh, and then it's also going to pass the quantity. If it doesn't, then by default, we're going to understand you just want to add one item to the cart. Then this is going to take care of the configuration. We'll come back to the configuration in a moment. Uh, then once we get the response, so this is a promise. So a promise is returned. And once we get the response, we basically check if the stored session is available, which means if local storage has a session, whether or not we had set the session and it's not the first time, it's probably the second time. So the session would have already been set in the local storage by us. So if it's not empty, actually this should be is empty. If this is empty, which means the ses store session is not available, it's not there in local storage. So we're going to call this function store uh, session and it's going to store the value of the session. So the name of the key under the header is XWC session is which is where you have the session available. I'm going to show that to you in a moment. Okay. Then we call the view card function. Now in the next video, we're going to continue further with the add to cart and view cart functionality. Okay. See you then.